Hey everybody, this is Jeremy here at Hilt's Machine Works. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to follow up on our last video in which we replaced bearings in a torque converter for a Coleman mini bike. This is an aftermarket torque converter that we got from Go Power Sports. And after a few years, the bearings went bad and we upgraded from the China bearings to some SKFs made in Italy. And we uh, knocked those out with a punch and use a hammer and a socket to put those back in, something that you could do at home. And I'll put the link to that video in the description. But when we took this apart, we noticed another problem. The problem we encountered was, as the old bearing got worn out, you began to get wear on the shaft here. And it was wobbling quite a bit because both bearings were shot, you can see in that old video. But you can see a gouge here in the shaft, and this is about four thousandths undersized from where it should be to fit snugly in the bearing. And what we're gonna do for, uh, you know, thought it'd be a good video, we'll break this apart, <clears throat> and we're gonna look at the shaft. We're gonna make another one out of this piece of mill chain. This is uh, a link from mill chain that I got from a forest products mill nearby. It's a very heavy duty, high quality steel, and I think it's gonna make a great shaft here to replace this one. So let's break this one down and get going. Let's go ahead here, take a 24 millimeter socket, start breaking this down. Okay. Here's the old shaft right here. It's gonna be a quick, fun little project. Very quickly made up a crude drawing here of what we're looking at. The overall length is six inches, 13 30 seconds. We are at a diameter here of about 17 and a half millimeters. I mic'd it at 687.8. Here was probably 16 millimeters. I got 628.5. We got an M16 by 1.5 thread on the end of here and a 316 key seat, four inches and a quarter long. So let's go ahead and put this in the bandsaw. We'll cut this, face it to length, and we're gonna start turning. We're gonna take off a hundred thousandths now. Okay, now that we faced it off and we turned down the end a little bit, what I've done here is I have it in here turning the OD down to the larger diameter. And uh, some of the more experienced operators or machinists watching my channel might be asking themselves right now, probably should be asking yourself, why did Hiltz put that uh, pin in the bandsaw? Because the optimal way to do something like this would be to take the entire, uh, the piece of material longer than we need do all the operations in one setup so you have concentricity all the way through then just part it off or cut it back in the bandsaw and then just face the end so we couldn't do that because the pin 
was extremely bent, and I'm kind of watching the lathe here in the background. But the pin had a big bow in it after a certain point, and so what I had to do was cut it before the bend. I didn't want to have to try to press it to, to straighten it out and all that stuff, but I thought it would have been a waste of time. And uh, so I cut it at the bend, I've got it in here, we faced it, we turned down to the 16 millimeter um, on one side of it so we can hold that in the chuck, and we're gonna do the rest of the operations while we hold that one piece. So that part will have a little bit of run out, and I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But it doesn't really matter, as I'm gonna explain here, that's gonna be the threaded portion where only the nut's gonna be where it has any run out, it's not gonna affect it at all. The bearings are all gonna be supported. So let me show you that and explain it. What I did is I turned down this piece first uh, when I faced it off, enough to kind of hold it in the chuck and uh, support the other end. The bearing is gonna ride here and about into here. That will all be concentric this whole length for sure. This does have run out, it's gonna have a couple thousandths run out here but that's just gonna be the threaded portion when we're done. So I'm not, and we're just gonna use a die on that. We're not gonna single point it just for the sake of time. But it's not really gonna matter that this is, has a little bit of run out because it's just the threaded. It's just, only thing that's gonna be there is the nut. Where the actual components of the torque converter are is all gonna be on this, which is gonna be obviously concentric because we're doing it in one setup and one operation. So that's kind of the thought behind it. And we're almost down um, to the, end of our roughing cuts here, and we'll continue moving on this shaft. Okay, we're gonna groove this with a hand ground high speed steel tool. We are now all reassembled. The shaft is in place. Completely smooth, quiet, no end play. All repaired thanks to some new SKF bearings and a brand new shaft. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you'd, else you'd like to see in my machine shop. What things excite you, what things don't excite you. I appreciate every view and viewer.